In this example, we start with the function f of x, uh, which is given above. And we're going to identify the key properties that we need to construct what we'll call a skeleton graph. And that would be the intercepts, asymptotes, vertical, horizontal, and holes in the graph. So let's identify these key properties. And as we do so, we'll fill them out in our skeleton graph. So the first thing that we can take a look at um, is going to be the y-intercept. And so to find the y-intercept, we set x equals 0, and we evaluate f at 0. And so using the function above, in the numerator, we would get 0 minus 0 plus 10, so we have 10. And in the denominator, we have 0 minus 4, that gives us minus 4. So we have a y-intercept at 0 minus 5 halves. So let's get a graph going over here that's going to have some of these key properties. So, uh, so far, we found that we have a y-intercept at 0 minus 5 halves. So I'll just mark this point with a minus 5 halves. Next up, uh, we'll take a look at any horizontal asymptotes. And so to find the horizontal asymptote, we take a look at the ratio of the leading coefficients. And in this case, that's x squared over x squared. Uh, excuse me, the ratio of the leading terms. And so the leading terms are x squared over x squared. They have the same degree. So we take the ratio of the leading coefficients. That gives us 1. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 1. So on our skeleton graph, we're going to just put a dashed horizontal line at y equals 1. Now let's take a look at the x-intercept. And so to find the intercepts and uh, vertical asymptotes and the holes, let's just first take this function f of x and we'll factor the numerator and the denominator. So in the numerator, we can factor this into x minus 5 times x minus 2. And in the denominator, we can factor this into x plus 2 and x minus 2. And so we have a common factor, x minus 2, in the numerator and the denominator. So for the x-intercept, these are going to occur at any value of x where we have a 0 in the numerator but not in the denominator. So that's going to be over here at x minus 5. That factor means we have an x-intercept at 5, 0. For the vertical asymptote, that's going to occur where we have a 0 in the denominator but not in the numerator. So that occurs at x minus 2, corresponding to this factor over here. And then um, lastly, we have a hole at values of x that correspond to zeros in both the numerator and the denominator for these common zeros. And that gives us a hole at x equals 2. And we can find exactly where to place this hole by reducing the function, canceling out the common factor. And when I evaluate the reduced fraction, we see that we're going to get a hole at 2. And in the numerator, I would have minus 3. And in the denominator, I would get Four. So we have a hole at minus 3, 4. And so coming over to mark these properties on our skeleton graph, the x-intercept at 5, 0, we can place over here. 
at 5, the vertical asymptote at minus 2. We can put a vertical dashed line at x equals minus 2. And then we have a hole at 2 minus 3 fourths. So I'm going to mark that in green over here at 2. And this is what we mean by a skeleton graph. So we kind of have the bones of the graph up here. And um, in the next example, we'll talk about how we can create a sign chart to fill in the skeleton graph and get a more complete picture of this function.